True Creepy Neighbor, Horror Stories, The Shadow Next Door, in the quiet suburb of Willow Creek, nestled between rows of pristine homes and well-tended gardens, there stood an anomaly, the house at the end of the lane. Unlike its neighbors, this house was shrouded in neglect, its windows boarded up, its yard overgrown. The locals whispered about the reclusive figure who lived there, Mr. Grayson, a man seldom seen. His history as murky as the shadows that clung to his home. Mia, a curious and intrepid journalist, moved to Willow Creek for its tranquility and the promise of a peaceful life. However, the mystery of Mr. Grayson and his dilapidated residence quickly piqued her interest. Neighbors spoke of odd noises at night, strange lights flickering behind closed curtains, and Mr. Grayson's rare appearances, always at dusk, shrouded in an old, tattered coat, his face obscured. Driven by her love for investigative reporting, Mia decided to learn more about her enigmatic neighbor. She started with casual inquiries, talking to the locals. They told tales of the previous occupants, a happy family that vanished one night without a trace, leaving only a single word scratched into the dining room table. Beware. Undeterred, Mia began surveilling the house noting the irregular patterns of Mr. Grayson's activities. He would leave at odd hours, carrying peculiar, shapeless bundles, and return before dawn, looking around cautiously, as if aware of prying eyes. One night, fueled by a mix of curiosity and reckless bravery, Mia crept closer to the property, her camera ready to capture any oddity. She found a vantage point where she could see a sliver of the interior through a gap in the boards covering a window. Inside, the house was cluttered with arcane symbols, old books, and what appeared to be ritualistic paraphernalia. As Mia watched, Mr. Grayson entered the room, setting down a new, strangely writhing bundle. He began chanting in an unknown language, the atmosphere thickening, shadows swirling around him. Suddenly, he stopped, his head snapping towards the window where Mia hid, his eyes meeting hers through the gap. Terrified, Mia fled back to her home. The chilling gaze of Mr. Grayson seared into her memory, but the encounter was only the beginning. Over the next few days, Mia felt a growing sense of unease, as if being watched. Objects in her house moved inexplicably, and she caught glimpses of a shadowy figure lurking at the edge of her vision. Determined to uncover the truth, Mia reviewed her photos and research, piecing together the history of the house and its connection to Mr. Grayson. The evidence pointed to something far more sinister than a mere reclusive neighbor. It hinted at dark rituals, missing persons, and a malevolent force tied to Mr. Grayson's presence. As Mia delved deeper into the mystery, the boundary between her investigation and her personal safety blurred. The more she discovered, the more the darkness seemed to encroach upon her life. The malevolent force recognizing her as a threat to its existence. The story continues with Mia standing on a precipice, her journalistic pursuit turned personal vendetta as she resolves to confront the darkness, not just to expose Mr. Grayson, but to save herself and perhaps unravel the true horror lurking in the house at the end of the lane. Mia's determination to unravel the mystery of Mr. Grayson and his sinister house drove her deeper 
into a web of darkness. Armed with her camera and a newfound resolve, she set out to expose whatever malevolence lay within the walls of the dilapidated house at the end of the lane. One evening, under the cloak of twilight, Mia ventured closer to Mr. Grayson's property than ever before. The air was thick with an unspoken dread, and the silence of the neighborhood seemed to amplify every heartbeat and creaking step she took. As she approached the backyard, she noticed an old, rusted hatch, partially obscured by overgrown weeds. The entrance to a cellar, perhaps, that could hold the key to the mysterious happenings. Mia, camera in hand, carefully opened the hatch, the metal groaning in protest, revealing a dark, narrow staircase leading downward. With only the faint light of her flashlight piercing the darkness, she descended into the bowels of the earth, each step taking her further into the heart of the mystery. The cellar was a cavernous space filled with relics of the past and strange artifacts that defied explanation. In the center of the room, a large pentagram was etched into the floor, surrounded by candles that flickered as if alive. Books of occult knowledge and ancient tomes lay scattered around, their pages filled with dark rituals and forbidden lore. As Mia explored, taking cautious photographs, she stumbled upon a series of journals meticulously detailing the events leading to the family's disappearance and Mr. Grayson's descent into the occult. The writings revealed a man obsessed with achieving immortality and power through the summoning of a dark entity, sacrificing everything and everyone to sate his unholy desires. The sound of the hatch slamming shut echoed through the cellar, plunging Mia into darkness. Panic surged as she realized she was not alone. A cold whisper caressed her ear, speaking in Mr. Grayson's voice, yet distorted by an otherworldly malice. You should not have come here, it hissed, as shadows began to coalesce into a tangible form. Mia turned to face her pursuer, the camera's flash providing brief illuminations of her creepy neighbor, his eyes now glowing with a supernatural light. The cellar, once just a storage of forbidden relics, transformed into a theater of nightmares, revealing the true extent of Mr. Grayson's pact with the darkness. Despite the terror, Mia's instinct as a journalist prevailed. She continued to document, snapping pictures as she dodged the shadowy tendrils that lashed out from Mr. Grayson's form. The flashes of light seemed to momentarily hinder the entity, revealing the tortured soul of Mr. Grayson, trapped within his own dark creation. As the confrontation escalated, the entity's form became more erratic, and the fabric of reality in the cellar twisted and groaned under the weight of the unleashed dark forces. Mia, realizing the danger was far greater than just a haunting, sought a way to not only escape, but also find something, anything, that could banish or bind the entity and save both herself and the remnants of Mr. Grayson's humanity. The story thus continues, with Mia trapped in a battle for survival and truth within the heart of the shadowed cellar, the line between the physical and the supernatural blurring as she confronts the dark soul of Eldritch Manor, its secrets now clawing their way into the light.
the suffocating darkness of the cellar, with the malevolent presence of Mr. Grayson's entity looming over her, Mia's mind raced for a solution. The room, now alive with eldritch energy, pulsated with the power of the rituals conducted within its stone walls. The journals she had found hinted at a way to counteract the dark forces, mentioning a talisman that Mr. Grayson had created as a safeguard, a focal point for his power and, potentially, his undoing. Amidst the chaos, Mia's eyes caught a glint of metal from a corner of the cellar. There, atop an ancient altar, lay the talisman, a crude, amulet-shaped object inscribed with symbols that throbbed with an eerie light, realizing it might be her only chance. Mia lunged for the amulet, her fingers barely clasping its cold surface as Mr. Grayson's shadowy form surged towards her. The moment Mia's skin contacted the talisman, a shockwave of energy burst forth, illuminating the cellar with blinding light. Visions of Mr. Grayson's past flooded her mind. His descent into madness, the pact with the dark entity, and the moment of his tragic realization that he had become a prisoner within his own home, bound to the entity he had summoned. Mia, now connected to the house's dark history through the talisman, understood that Mr. Grayson's soul was tethered to the entity, giving it strength. To banish the creature, she needed to sever the connection, liberate Mr. Grayson's soul, and restore balance to the disrupted energies. With the entity writhing in agony before her, weakened by the light of the talisman, Mia recited incantations from the journals, her voice growing stronger with each word. The symbols on the talisman glowed hotter, casting the cellar in a surreal spectrum of colors. Mr. Grayson's form, caught between the physical and ethereal, struggled against the binding light, his screams melding with the whispers of the shadows. As the ritual reached its climax, the air in the cellar thickened, time itself seeming to slow. The entity, now fully exposed and vulnerable, was pulled into the talisman, its form dissolving into smoke and shadow. Mr. Grayson's visage appeared within the swirling vortex, his expression one of relief and sorrow mouthing a silent apology before being released, his spirit finally finding peace. The cellar, once a nexus of dark power, fell silent, the oppressive atmosphere lifting as the entity's presence was eradicated. Mia, exhausted but resolute, clutched the talisman, now inert, its purpose fulfilled. The house at the end of the lane freed from its long-standing curse, seemed to sigh in relief, the dawn light beginning to seep through the cracks in the boarded windows. But the story doesn't end here, with the dark entity banished and Mr. Grayson's soul at rest. The secrets of the house and the true nature of the rituals conducted there remained. Mia, her role as a journalist intertwined with her destiny, as the liberator of Eldritch Manor, knew that more mysteries awaited her. The house, with its many rooms and hidden passages, held further secrets waiting to be uncovered. Each shadow and whisper, a fragment of the larger, hidden truth that extended beyond the manor's confines into the heart of Willow Creek itself. Thus, the narrative continues, with Mia standing at the threshold of new discoveries, the line between her investigative pursuits 
and the supernatural world forever blurred as deeper layers of the town's history and her connection to it begin to unravel. With the immediate threat subdued and Mr. Grayson's troubled spirit set free, Mia's investigative instincts took over. The manor, no longer under the shadowy thrall of the dark entity, revealed its secrets more willingly. Each room, each corridor, told a story of a house that was much more than a mere dwelling. It was a repository of arcane knowledge and a witness to the unbridled ambition that led to Mr. Grayson's downfall. As daylight penetrated the gloom of the house, Mia explored further, discovering hidden compartments, secret passages, and lost artifacts. Among these, was a collection of Mr. Grayson's personal effects, including letters and diaries that detailed not only his descent into the occult, but also hinted at a network of like-minded individuals in Willow Creek and beyond, suggesting a conspiracy rooted in the supernatural. The realization that Mr. Grayson was perhaps just a piece in a larger, more sinister puzzle sent a chill down Mia's spine. She pondered the implications of her discovery, realizing that the story she had uncovered was far bigger and more dangerous than she had initially thought. The town's quiet facade might be hiding a labyrinth of dark secrets, with threads leading the powerful figures and shadowy organizations. Determined to follow the lead, Mia began to document her findings meticulously, planning to delve into the town's archives and public records for any clues that could connect the dots. However, the more she uncovered, the more she felt the piercing gaze of unseen watchers. Incidents around her home and during her forays into town suggested that she was being closely monitored her every move scrutinized by those who wished to keep the darkness of Willow Creek hidden. One evening, while reviewing her notes and photographs, Mia noticed something unsettling, a figure that appeared consistently in the background, a silent observer whose presence she had previously overlooked. This discovery confirmed her suspicions of being watched and hinted at the depth of the conspiracy she was unraveling. Now, with the truth of Eldritch Manor partly revealed and the larger mystery of Willow Creek unfolding, Mia knew she was standing on the edge of an abyss, peering into the depths of a story that was as terrifying as it was compelling. The silent, creeping horror that had started with Mr. Grayson was but the first layer of a much deeper, darker narrative woven into the very fabric of the town. Her resolve hardened. Mia prepared for the next phase of her investigation, aware that each step brought her closer to forces that defied understanding. She was no longer just a journalist seeking a story, but a key player in a battle against an ancient, hidden evil that sought to control not just Eldritch Manor, but the soul of Willow Creek itself. The story thus continues, with Mia navigating the treacherous waters of her investigation. Armed with her wits, her camera, and the remnants of the manor's secrets, each shadowy corner of Willow Creek each whispered rumor became a piece of the puzzle, leading her deeper into the heart of the darkness that lurked just beneath the surface of the seemingly peaceful town.
Mia's investigation into the shadowy underbelly of Willow Creek grew increasingly perilous. The more she dug into the town's past, the more she realized that the darkness was not just in the history of Eldridge Manor, but woven into the very fabric of the town itself. Her encounters with the silent observer in her photographs became more frequent, and she felt a constant surveillance, a pressure that seemed to push back against her inquiries. Late one night, while sifting through public records and old newspaper clippings in the town's archive, Mia stumbled upon a series of articles that hinted at a pattern of disappearances stretching back decades. Each incident coinciding with strange sightings and unexplained phenomena similar to what she had experienced at Eldridge Manor. These events were always quietly dismissed or explained away, but Mia saw the connections, the threads that linked them to a larger, more sinister narrative. Compelled by her findings, she decided to reach out to other residents, hoping to find someone who shared her suspicions or who had noticed the oddities of Willow Creek. Her search led her to an elderly woman, Mrs. Winters, a longtime resident rumored to be a recluse. Shunned for her outspoken claims of dark forces at play in the town, Mrs. Winters lived on the outskirts of Willow Creek in a house filled with protective charms and relics. She spoke of a secret society, the Covenant of the Shadow, which she claimed had influenced the town for generations, manipulating events to serve an ancient, malevolent entity. According to her, Eldritch Manor was just one of many focal points for the Covenant's activities, a node in a network of dark energy. Mia listened, her skepticism waning as Mrs. Winters produced diaries and artifacts that corroborated the stories of occult practices and covert rituals. The old woman warned Mia of the dangers she faced, emphasizing that her interference had likely already marked her as an enemy of the Covenant. Undeterred, Mia continued her collaboration with Mrs. Winters, piecing together the history of the Covenant and its ties to the town's founding families. They planned to expose the group and their nefarious activities, hoping to sever their connection to the dark entity they served. However, their efforts did not go unnoticed. Strange occurrences escalated around Mia's home and during her visits to the town center. Shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and the once friendly smiles of townsfolk twisted into sneers of disdain or fear. Mia realized that the town, or at least some of its inhabitants, were under the influence of the Covenant, watching her every move, waiting for an opportunity to silence her. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Mia understood that the battle she was fighting was not just against human adversaries, but against an ancient darkness that had sunk its roots deep into Willow Creek. Her quest for truth had become a struggle for survival and a mission to prevent a looming darkness from consuming the town and beyond. The narrative thus continues, with Mia and Mrs. Winters delving deeper into the heart of the mystery confronting not only the tangible threats of the Covenant's followers, but also the creeping dread of their unseen, otherworldly benefactor. Their journey is fraught with danger, each revelation drawing them closer to a confrontation with an evil that transcends time and space. Its designs on Willow Creek but a precursor to a far grander, more terrifying endgame. 
as Mia and Mrs. Winters delved deeper into the secrets of the Covenant of the Shadow and its grip on Willow Creek, the peril they faced intensified. The darkness that pervaded the town was no longer just an ominous backdrop to their investigation, but an active, malevolent force trying to thwart their every move. Determined to break the Covenant's hold, Mia and Mrs. Winters devised a plan to disrupt the impending ritual, believed to be the final step in summoning the dark entity into their world. Using the information gleaned from the old diaries and artifacts, they identified the ritual site, an ancient stone circle hidden deep within the woods surrounding Willow Creek. The night of the ritual was cloudless, the stars unnaturally bright, as if the cosmos itself was bearing witness to the unfolding events. Mia and Mrs. Winters, armed with the knowledge of the arcane and the talisman from Eldritch Manor, approached the site where the members of the Covenant, cloaked in shadow, had already begun their incantations. As they chanted, the air grew colder, and the ground beneath the stone circle started to crack, revealing a glow of otherworldly light. Mia and Mrs. Winters, hiding at the edge of the clearing, waited for the right moment to act. When the ritual reached its climax, and the veil between worlds grew thin, they emerged from the shadows. The talisman raised high, casting a beam of pure light across the circle. The effect was instantaneous and chaotic. The light from the talisman shattered the dark energy, disrupting the ritual. Screams of rage and fear melded with the roar of the collapsing portal. As the Covenant members were thrown back, their connection to the dark entity severed. In the chaos, the shadowy figure that had been haunting Mia appeared its form destabilized by the disruption of the ritual. It was the manifestation of the entity itself, partially summoned, but now trapped between worlds. Mia, focusing the power of the talisman, channeled the collective will and determination of all those who had suffered under the Covenant's reign. With a final, desperate shout, she directed the light towards the entity, banishing it back to the darkness from whence it came. The stone circle exploded in a burst of light and shadow, leaving behind only scorched earth and the remnants of broken chains of power. In the aftermath, the influence of the Covenant over Willow Creek dissipated. The town slowly awakened from its long nightmare, with many of its residents previously under the Covenant's sway, coming to terms with the reality of their situation. Mia and Mrs. Winters, regarded as heroes, continued to guard the town's secrets, ensuring that the dark forces would never return. Mia's journey from a curious journalist to the savior of Willow Creek was complete, but the story of the town, now free from the shadows, was just beginning anew. Eldritch Manor, the epicenter of the dark events, stood silent and watchful, a reminder of the past struggles and the eternal vigilance needed to keep the darkness at bay. Thus, the story of Mia and the true creepy neighbor, Horror Stories, concludes with the light of dawn breaking over Willow Creek, promising a new day free from the shadows of the night, the town's eerie silence replaced by the hopeful murmur of renewal.